In an industry that centers around smack talk, it's not surprising that the now-retired UFC fighter Ronda Rousey, who herself was known for trash talk, is now having harsh words directed at her. But is it fair to talk smack about a retired UFC fighter? Stay tuned and don't go away, because UFC flyweight star Casey O'Neill is defending Ronda Rousey after recent criticism from UFC champion Juliana Pena. First up, would women's MMA be where it is today without rowdy Ronda Rousey? Let's take a look. Many have argued that without Ronda Rousey, women's MMA would not be where it is today. Many feel that it was only when Rowdy came into the UFC and wowed audiences with her breathtaking performances and firmly established herself as one of the biggest stars in the history of the UFC that women around the world felt they had a place in mixed martial arts. Of course, everybody saw Rousey's whirlwind rise to the top come to an end when she faced off against Holly Holm and Amanda Nunes. Holly Holm famously knocked Rowdy out with a brutal head kick that put the champ to sleep, and Amanda Nunes stopped Rousey in the first round of their bout with a barrage of nasty punches. Everyone has their own opinion about how Ronda handled herself after the losses, and for the most part, they're fairly mixed. Recently, though, the UFC's current queen of the bantamweight division, Juliana Pena, opened up in an interview and insisted that Rousey is considered a joke in the MMA world, and that she doesn't expect Rousey to return to the octagon. Casey O'Neill, on the other hand, wasn't pleased with Pena's comments, and didn't hold back, saying, a joke, because she had a few losses and decided to move on with her life? This isn't how it should be. We should be supporting each other as females in this sport. You can have an opinion on someone's skills, but this isn't it. Forever a trailblazer and all she did for females. Next up, did some of the Korean Zombies comments at UFC 273 really get lost in translation? You bet. Fans have revealed what the Korean Zombie really told Joe Rogan at UFC 273 in a post-fight interview, and it seems as though at least some of Chan Sung Jung's comments were lost in translation. Chan Sung Jung came up short in his quest to win the UFC featherweight title. In the main event of UFC 273, the man known simply as Korean Zombie was dominated and ultimately defeated by Alexander Volkanovsky with a fourth round TKO. The loss dropped Jung's record down to 17 wins and 7 losses, and it was similar to his last title fight, his fourth round TKO loss to Jose Aldo, which took place back in 2013. Despite losing out on his two chances to clinch UFC gold, the Korean Zombie is still one of the most popular fighters in the UFC, with legions of fans that have loved watching some of his historic UFC performances over the years. After his loss to Volkanovski, Jung spoke through a translator with Joe Rogan in the center of the octagon. Rogan didn't have any tricks up his sleeve and gave Jung the standard interview that any defeated fighter gets. But, according to a few knowledgeable Korean speakers online, Jung's translator didn't give Rogan, or the millions of viewers, all of what Jung had to say. Up next, so what did the Korean zombie really say to Joe Rogan at UFC 273? Let's find Find out. Korean-speaking fans say that Jung hinted at retiring from the UFC altogether. Apparently, Jung said, I know now I can't be UFC champion, and that he wants to reevaluate his future career goals and think about what he's fighting for. Much of the world first saw Jung when he made his debut at WEC 48 back in 2010 when he faced off against Leonard Garcia. Jung's cool nickname and great performance won him a lot of fans in the United States, and 12 years later, some of those fans are still cheering him on. When Jung lost by a knockout head kick to George Roop, he lost some of his star power, but when he beat Garcia in a rematch by a twister submission, he more or less redeemed himself with fans. And after that twister submission win against Garcia, Jug managed to follow up with a nice KO against Mark Hominick, and he even choked out Dustin Poirier. Those wins gave Jug a contender spot for the featherweight crown, but he was unable to defeat Jose Aldo. After the Aldo fight, Jung had a long layoff because he was forced to complete his mandatory military service requirements to South Korea. Jung made a comeback in 2017, earned a 4-3 record, and made managed to defeat Dennis Bermudez, Hanato Moicano, Frankie Edgar, which earned the Korean Zombie a performance of the night bonus, by the way, and he also won a decision over Dan Ige. So, stay tuned, and don't go away, because we're revealing the latest UFC news. Next up is, Mark Madsen too old for MMA? Apparently not. Mark Madsen was originally a wrestler, but he shifted to MMA. Many observers doubted Madsen claiming that he was far too old to start an MMA career at the age of 37. Well, 12 professional fights later, and including his UFC 270 win over Vink Pichel, Madsen's MMA record is now 12-0, and a 4-0 record in the UFC. Madsen is beyond happy and proud that he's managed to prove all of his critics wrong. He might be older than most fighters starting a UFC career, but Madsen has certainly proven that he is not too old for success. Madsen said, I'm proud. I'm proud to get the job done again. How much is it? 12-0? I think so. Still undefeated. I decided to retire from wrestling in 2018. I decided to move into MMA 
100%. People told me back then when I told everybody I wanted to sign with the UFC that I was too old. Well, I'm here. Believe it or not, Madsen is actually an Olympian who won a silver medal in the 2016 Olympic Games. Madsen is moving to Scottsdale, Arizona in order to train with Coach Eddie Cha at Fight Ready MMA. And in a recent interview said, I'm moving over to the States. I'm doing a two-year title run. This is probably the best start I could have at all. Pichel, he's a big challenge. He's a tough dude. One of the physically strongest guys in the lightweight division. I'm proud. I'm happy. To be honest, MMA is such a beautiful sport. It's an honor to be in the UFC. It's an honor to compete with the best MMA fighters in the world. I'm happy to be here. Up next is a Canadian fighter about to make waves in the UFC. Let's take a look. Canadians aren't exactly known for dominating the UFC as they do, for instance, in the National Hockey League. And aside from the long-retired fighter George St. Pierre, who some consider to be one of the greatest UFC fighters of all time, Canadian fighters haven't really made much of a splash in the octagon since GSP. But maybe Mike Malott is about to change that. The Canadian welterweight fighter recently made his UFC debut and knocked out American Mickey Gall in the first round undercard at UFC 273. As Malott entered the octagon, he was greeted with a welcome as cold as a Canadian winter, with American fans chanting, USA, USA, as both fighters started to land some bombs. Malott clobbered Gall with a big right hand two minutes into the bout and stunned him, but Gall ended up taking Malott down to the ground. Malott got back up on his feet with a bloody nose, but when Gall pushed forward, Malott threw another big right to the ear and dropped Gall with a left to the chin. At this point, Malott let loose with a flurry of punches on Gall's face until referee Larry Folsom intervened and stopped the fight at 3 minutes and 41 seconds. Malott is 30 years old and hails from Burlington, Ontario. But now, the big question is, can Malott repeat this kind of performance again and again? And finally, did some guy named Hamzat Chimaev, a relative nobody, just beat the number two ranked fighter in the world? You bet. On Saturday night at UFC 273, Hamzat Chimaev won a unanimous decision over Gilbert Burns in an incredible fight that had fans on their feet and going wild. The end result was a fight of the year candidate, and according to UFC President Dana White, one of the best fights he had ever seen. White said, It's one of the best fights I've ever seen. It's one of the coolest fights I've ever been to. The place was so loud and people were going crazy. That fight was eclipsing the co-main and main event all week, and I was talking to Rogan, Sean Shelby, Mick Maynard, and everyone else. Think about this. When is the last time you saw a guy come out of nowhere, nobody knows who he is, then fights a couple of fights, and then fights the number two ranked guy in the world and wins? When you get into the top five in the UFC, it's no joke, man especially in that division. That division is straight killers. Tonight was a big test for him, and he passed. Looks like there's a new sheriff in town in the UFC's welterweight division. And that's a wrap for today's video. Thank you for watching.